told I was the second one, so <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah, now I'm here. Um, yeah, so the test, uh, my testimony is uh, titled Coworker in Christ. Um, it's Romans 16, verses 3 to 4. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my co workers in Christ Jesus. They risk their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. Um, first, who was ruler over my life? My name is Priska Kesters. I was born on the 25th of July 19, 1999 in Bonn, Germany. My parents are Shepherd Erfurcht and missionary Monika Kesters. Um, maybe some of you know them. Mm -hmm. They're the first international house church of a Korean missionary and a German shepherd in Bonn, UBF. I have an older brother, Samuel, and my younger brother is called Peter. He sits <laughs> in the back. Um, God gave his promise for me to my parents through Romans 16, 3 and 4. Read Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ Jesus. They risked their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. But my parents, my parents worried a lot about me even from ladyhood. My development seems to be late. I learned to walk and speak later than other children. Nevertheless, through my parents' prayer and God's grace in leading me to therapists, I started to walk and talk, and talk and talk. <laughs> the deeper problem was that although I had the privilege to grow up particip participating actively in a Christian church community, I did not have personal faith and even pushed myself away from God. I grew up as a second child and therefore learned how to assert myself and to fight for myself and my ambitions. Over the years, uh, this, however, has caused me to suffer inwardly from the feeling of inferiority. This intensified in high school. I was confused about my personality, the people who, um, personality, and how to deal with people around me. I was an inconspicuous small girl on the outside, but the people who knew me well knew that I was always seeking attention by being the class's clown and having a rather aggressive attitude towards others, and often fought with my teachers and classmates. Furthermore. Uh, furthermore, I was a poor student and finally had to repeat the whole 8th grade. My ego was shaken, my self-confidence broken. When I went into the French oral exam, um, so in Germany when you're a bad student and you um, don't have enough uh, scores, uh, good, good scores in the, at the end of the year, you have to do an exam to pass the grade. Um, so at, at the end of 8th grade, I went to the French exam and in the French oral exam I remember my whole body shaking so that I was not even able to say baguette sitting in front of all the teachers. <laughs> During that time I lived in my little room in the UBF center and when I failed this exam and I was told to give up all my old friends, my old life and start again with new people in a new grade with other teachers, I cried out of anger and shame but also out of fear of what would come. The grimly cheeky girl who had somehow always managed to live her life without God and punch through every wall that she faced was now the exact opposite in almost every area of her life. Second, God is Lord of my life. Be a co-worker like Priscilla in the Bible. At this low, low point of my life, when I had a broken, desperate heart and I questioned the meaning behind everything, God did not leave me alone. My parents and missionary Peter and all the people in church prayed for me and encouraged me to start a new life with Christ. How privileged am I? I slowly realized that everything that had gone wrong or led to this point of my life did not come from the circumstances from other people or from God, but because I did not want to open my heart and accept God's lordship of my life. Instead, I tried to approach everything I did with my own strength. Looking back, I have to admit that I was so weak that I could not even manage a single of my own problems. In 2016, Missionary Peter gave me the task of preaching God's word from Genesis 1 at a children's conference. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This word taught me everything. Most importantly, it taught me that everything happens through and for God's plan and will, because he is the one and only almighty creator of the universe. Mm. No matter how much I try to run away from him being the most important part of my life, he will always be the one who knows best about me, my heart, my attitude, my inner being, and my thoughts and plans. 
The word from Genesis 1 helped me to accept God's word and plan for me from Romans 16, 3 and 4, to be patient with him hearing my prayers and to be a shepherd and a Bible teacher like Priscilla and the Bible for my friends and sheep. I have already received God's help in school. My relationship with my teachers, peers, and my school, stu uh, school studies transformed, and I became a model student. I recently graduated from high school with very high grades. Looking back, I see this as God's grade and love for me. However, I also started to become proud, giving myself credit and craving more worldly success. I have always been and still am an egoistically self-centered person. It seems therefore almost impossible for me to deny myself in order to become a co-worker like Prisca. But God, who is so faithful and does not give up on me, loves me and every of every little pe little bit of me. He keeps his promise of hope for me to be like Prisca. May he be the focus of my attention, heart, and hope. Amen. Right now, I feel like I am spiritually at the beginning of the right path of faith in God but at the same time only the beginning of a long, narrow path and a steady struggle with Satan and my sinful nature. I pray that in this time between school and study, I will use every precious second to prepare myself for the struggle, clearing and purifying my heart from all the dirty sins and voices, of which self-centeredness, disobedience, laziness, ingratitude, the focusing on worldly pleasure are only some concerns to me, and receiving God's training. With all of this, I wish to come to Jesus' cross and repent with all of my heart. I pray that God will see my desire and longing for spiritual growth, strengthens me, and eventually begins to work in and through me piece by piece. I pray to become a mother of faith, Bible teacher and collaborator in Bonn, and also in the place God has chosen for me, Germany, Europe, and eventually the whole world. Okay. One word, a life of faith that is just beginning, constantly growing to be a hero of faith and Bible teacher like Christ in the Bible. Amen. Onions, I think. Pork. 
dogs. Chicharros. Chicharitos. Okay. Um, well, um, cool. in 1988, uh, God touched the missionary home for Bolivia through us, uh, missionary Paulina and Esteban Cho. Uh, she's a missionary Paulina. Missionary uh, Paulina came first and served worship service by her, herself for a month in a small rent room. Then, uh, later, missionary stayed on right. You can see the first uh, church, or type of church. <laughs> um, but this time it was difficult because after two or three years, uh, there were no ship. There were even three days and two nights conference without any ship. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, um, very truly, I tell you, uh, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Amen. So the missionary Stephen received this word and has decided to obey it. Then he saw the vision that many spiritual children will have. And he received uh, this word, Genesis 55. He took him outside and said, look at the sky and count the stars. If you need, you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. And well, in this part, uh, the shepherd, uh, the missionary Esteban uh, shared the gospel to my father, who is shepherd Abraham, uh, but he left. <laughs> And then, in 19, 1993, Shepherd Abraham decided to return to his own, and he invited the Shepherd Mateo. You can see here, uh, he's my father. He's my father, and the Shepherd Mateo, Mateo uh, Missionera Paulina, my mother. He's Shepherd Mateo. Then, uh, in 1998, there were no uh, 30 participants in Sunday worship, but they fell into lost full desires, so God cleaned the church, and only um, about 10 remained, but God used them to raise many sheep. Mm -hmm. So you can see a Bible study with uh, disciples, mm -hmm. Maria. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a Bible study in the college, in the campus. Uh, this is one of the Bible conferences. Mm -hmm. She's Maria too, I think. <laughs> Then, um, my father uh, remembered by faith, and when he became a shepherd, he's, uh, that's me, and Daniel, Cho, <laughs> Daniel Cho, and this is uh, one of the Bible conference. And today, God allows a church, the church to grow, uh, having many sheep and raising shepherds. Then they are a shepherds of the church. He is a uh, shepherd Mateo with his wife, missionary Corina from Mexico. Uh, this is uh, one of the other Bible conference, Bible study group. And this is our church. And the mission, the ship, missionary Esteban explained us something like a symposium. Uh, they are singing. <laughs> This is a group Bible study in our church. Um, yeah. Then uh, this was, I think, two, mo two months ago. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, this girl, I are the new shepherd. Um, then I don't know how to say when, when missionaries say, uh, uh, give the. Uh, le leadership succession, you know. Uh, okay, uh, he's my father and uh, Shepherd Mateo. Um, this is uh, the my <laughs> father. <laughs> yeah. Then um, this is a Bible study. Uh, and God even allowed to send the first Bolivian missionary to to Argentina. Uh, is is he? He's a missionary in Noé. 
Um, this is the first uh, Latin Bible Conference in Bolivia, yeah. 2010. Um, oh, this is the Bible Conference in 2018, uh, I think in January. And this is the other, I think, this other Bible Conference uh, in March, I think. Um, well, this is my family. Uh, I couldn't find a picture of all of us, <laughs> so uh, for that it's separate. So she's my mother, my little brother, my big brother, and I will explain about him later. And uh, he's my father. Well, um, then uh, this is the keyword of the 2000 for this year. Uh, Acts 6, 4, and we will my praise and prayer and in the ministry of the Lord. Okay, and this is our prayer topics. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and is a, uh, a missionary Noe, as a co-worker in the work of, make, of making disciples in Argentina and bless him in national independence. Two, uh, God will open a way for the house church of Shepherd Alberto and Shepherd Andreina to serve his work in Paraguay. Life, uh, uh, live a life uh, centered in the work of preaching so that 100 week Bible studies can be done and 70 participants in the Sunday worship service. Um, pray for the disciple to get up in the morning to eat the bread a break in the church. Um, raise a uh, new house churches for the mission and uh, God raise three houses churches for to serve in Cochabamba pray for a uh, missionary Moses to be uh, to be sent a missionary to Cochabamba in this year it's a uh, older city of Bolivia mm -hmm. um, the last one pray to missionary Paulina and Shepherd Pamela can make a trip at missionary spice like a Caleb uh, Joshua to Paraguay in November. In November. Um, after the Bible conference in Brazil, uh, Let's Be Faith Warriors, um, my group decided to, to stay in the church all Fridays, uh, keeping our heart. Of, uh, we, for this year, we have uh, these keepers, it's Daniel 1.8. But Daniel resolved that he would not divide himself with the kings of food or with the wine that he drank. Before he asked the chief of the notch, notch to allow him not to divide himself. Where well, we have these prior topics, uh, be aware of the current of war through writing deep in meditation and coexistence on Fridays in the night. Um, to grow as a shepherd so of the university students grow up fishing every week, be the addition to games and animes, <laughs> <laughs> overcome lustful uh, desires and keep of holiness before God. <laughs> this was uh, in uh, bowling, we were playing bowling and this was in Brazil. Uh, please pray for us. Well, uh, uh, I will share me my testimony. Um, uh, the title is The Grace of God in My Life. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Eric Andres Quiro Mendoza. I'm 17 years old. I live in Santa Cruz, Bolivia. My parents are Eric Quiroz and, my, and, and Ingrid Mendoza. We are shepherds of UBF Santa Cruz, Uno, Juan, Bolivia. They have been serving the ministry for the past 44, uh, 24 years and by God, God grace. My, my dad is now the head of board of directors. I have two brothers. Um, my oldest brother is Joshua, who is 23 years old. Um, and the youngest is Leandro, who is 14 years old. 
Well, I was born in a Christian family. Going to the church was a routine, and I attend only because of my parents. I didn't take importance to the word of God or the thing in the church. I always considered my relationship with my brother made deciding to to know God more difficult. Uh, my big brother was uh, born with several outings, which were seen um, through the through the years. He can speak nor understand, and, and his spin is curved, causing other health problems. <coughs> Uh, I used to think that my brother was jealous of me because I was born healthy and he and the attention was for me. We uh, found almost uh, we fought almost all the time. Uh, the thing the fights were mostly my brother hitting me, hit me hitting or scratching me and injured and me crying. I could not fight back like the other children be, that, they, that like the other children do because I knew that my brother was not healthy like me, so I I passively let him punch me. Being at home was very stressful. Even as a child, I had to always watch not to to do something that would make my brother unhappy. However, no matter that I did, he seemed he seemed me to dislike everything I did, and I said. Uh, also, I felt uh, that my parents were always on my brother's side. Although I was the second son and six years younger than my brother, than my older brother, I had to act like I had to act like uh, like the first. This required a lot of work and responsibilities, uh, such as buying for uh, my brother and bathing him when he was dirty because both of my party had to work. I, uh, I, I could not have many friends, nor enjoying many things that other normal kids do, and much less inviting a few friends home for fear that my brother would hit them. I always ask God why do why don't you do something? Um, but the reality was the same. Beginning in the church and listening to God, I tried to experience God through praying, but the events of God did not answer my par my prayers, so which it caused me indifference things that came from Him. Having an a image, uh, image of Him as a God deep and indifferent to my problems, so I also decided to shut uh, down all interest in his business. I decided to go to church just as long I lived with my parents, but I as soon as as soon as I graduated from high school, I would leave my parents' house and became independent. However, I I thank uh, God for my parents who were shepherds, and because of them, I want want or not. I was explosive to hear the word of God through Sunday message, Bible study, and conference, even in the midst of my difficult childhood. One day, uh, uh, missionary Stephen, daily bread training, God gave me the word of Daniel 1a, but Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and the wine. He asked the chief officer for permission not to defy himself this way. I received the word and it gave me the polite hope and I could be like a, like a Daniel, keeping myself from the world which is full of temptation, like looking for how to get out of all this moment, momentary, uh, momentary uh, and having a wretch again God for his situation. When I was in the church, I heard God's word. I was hopeful, but whenever I turned to my reality, it was hard to practically believe in them. In sending of confronting my problems at home and sins with God's word, I did not want to think about them and decided to avoid them by making friends, going to parties, drinking, and looking for human love. 
This led me to have a double life, one in the church and other out in the world. But God's grace for my life was no was so so great that it did not let me. But He always insisted into the into my life again. God's faithfulness uh, and steadfast love helped me um, help me to return to Him through a prayer, allowing me to life to live a life struggling against bad friendship, invitation to go out and drink. Where I was, uh, where I was a woman, woman. Once again, God gave me uh, His word through John 5:8. Then Jesus said to him, "Get up, pick up, keep, pick up your mat and walk." Because I was like a this paralytic, paralytic was living a compromise life without hope, but hope. God helped me to return to Him. He uh, created in me the need to pray, which helped me a lot. Renewing my relationship with Him, not living a static uh, state in His work. Also, having per personal time in the mornings allowed me to return living a life, keeping myself from the world many times in spite of some faults. Thanks to this, I could change my way of seeing things in the church, not, not seeing the, them as a burden to a burden but with joy. Loving the, uh, loving the time of preparation of presentations uh, or going out to fish, serving the Bible study, a special song, being in part of the Friday fellowship with my other brothers in, and participants, in the Latin American International Conference, I was able to see that, that God was preparing me to live a blessed life as a shepherd mm -hmm. through my brother. I understood uh, that everything is part of His perfect plan for my life. Mm -hmm. God helped me uh, realize that God was always there. This helped me ch change my way of seeing the situation in my home, believing that all this was to to help me grow as a young leader of my of his church, go mm -hmm. help me uh, overcome every fatalistic throw and talk, and he helped me see that this problem was not a problem, but the strength of my home, which helped help us grow as <coughs> uh, grow as a house church of faith. Uh, by changing the way I look at my problems and my reality, I could see more clearly the mercy of God for my life, who did not give me up on the, gave me back, walking with me from the beginning until now. In February of these years, I had to take a, a exam to the university, which is not easy. But at that time, I was very indifferent to the world, to the world of God. So I thought that I, I could pass it without problems because I thought in I was good in those classes. So I so I let the time go by enjoying going out with my friends, leaving all this in, aside. My shepherd told me I have to prepare. And you have to pray to God, and He will get and He will give me, give me. I said I will do it, but in my head I was very proud. And, and two, the, I, I didn't need God's help. I can do it. I'm fine. The time of the exam arrived and the result was bad. In the class, in the class that I was conf, 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 confused about. That moment, uh, God, uh, God broke my, everything in me. My shepherd told me the truth. I'm glad you did not pass the, exam, the test. Now uh, God can work in you. Uh, the opportunity to take the test again was before coming to GLEF. So I prepared myself better going to the church to pray and study. God helped me, but in, the, in my heart there was a about about uh, whether I could pass it because my future depended on it. At, at that time God reveals his word to me in Mark 4.40. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? 
I accept this word and thanks to his mercy I was able to enter to the university. His grace did not end there because he allowed to me to obtain the visa to participate in this incredible forum. Uh, it is my desire that through um, the deep public study training and receive the word of God more personality. personally. Uh, I may grow as a work equipped by a teacher and shepherd of his Bolivian ship. I also want to be an encore and share in the fellowship with other fellow brothers in Christ. In order to strengthen each other by learning uh, and their perso personal experience with God. One word, Andres, have, have faith in God. Some people came to me and asked me uh, if uh, I have time to go over what I did uh, last night. I think that's too much, right? <laughs> so uh, I cannot go over all the uh, contents, uh, but I want to, instead of uh, going over the, all the contents, i like to uh, make questions to you. Okay. Um, Let's think about um, what we studied uh, last night. I want to ask you, who is the uh, first emperor in uh, Roman emperor? Caesar. Caesar okay, Caesar Augustus, right? Caesar Augustus. Uh, where his name is uh, mentioned in the Bible? Uh, chapter, two. chapter two, verse one, right? That is the answer. Okay, all right. Second, uh, who is the second uh, Roman emperor? Tiberius. Tiberius, not Tiberius. Tiberius is the uh, name of uh, Lake uh, uh, Tiberius. Okay. Tiberius, who, who the, uh, his name is mentioned in the Bible? He said No, Luke chapter 3, verse 1, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, third one is? Caligula. Caligula. Caligula, original Caligula, his father's name is uh, Gerimanius, uh, but he died too early, so um, Tiberius appointed his son uh, Caligula as your uh, Roman emperor. Caligula means small boots. When his uh, father was uh, general in uh, German uh, mines, uh, his <laughs> soldiers made small boots for him, so they uh, instead of naming him, he, they called him Caligula, small boots. And what is the fourth? Claudius. Claudius, right? Claudius. Uh, where his name is mentioned in the Bible? Acts chapter 11. Okay. Okay. All right. So there is an. Uh, I talk about the uh, incident, right? Uh, when Christian came into. Uh, city of Rome, uh, they went into synagogue, and uh, in the synagogue they teach the Bible. So Jewish people got so upset and there was fighting, and uh, Claudius was so upset that these foreigners, they are fighting in the, uh, the imperial city of Rome. So they all cast out. And that time, um, Aquila and uh, Priscilla also cast out from Rome and went to Corinth and met the Paul, right? Okay. That's the uh, instant. Okay. All right. We talk about the Nero. Uh, Nero, there is a lot of stories. And uh, we also, also talk about uh, Vespians, right? And uh, his son, Titus, uh, who, one who destroyed the uh, Temple of God. And next one is uh, Domitian. Domitian's story is so great because uh, because of him, uh, John, Apostle John, uh, sent it to where? Patmos. Patmos, right? Uh, Patmos. And he wrote? Revelation. Revelation. And after coming out of uh, Patmos, he went to Ephesus and he was shouting audience in the amphitheater and uh, in the beginning, there is a word. The word was with God, and word was God. 
this uh, John's Gospel, right? So uh, John's uh, Gospel written, his secretary uh, wrote down there would become a John's Gospel. Okay. Um, so uh, I'd like to go back to here. Uh, uh, why do you need to know about early church history? Uh, Gonzalez, uh, his name is actually um, Julio Gonzalez. He's uh, uh, from, uh, um, I forgot the country name. Anyway, uh, he's a uh, uh, Christian historian. Uh, he's a professor at uh, Emory University in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I think he is about to retire. He said he wrote a book, The Early Church to the Dawn of uh, Reformation. And uh, uh, he said in his book, without understanding the past, we are unable to understand ourselves. Or in a sense, the past still lives in us and influences who we are and how we understand the Christian message. So he clearly says that um, uh, knowing the history is very important. And he wrote uh, two volumes of uh, the early Christian uh, book. Uh, if you have a chance, you can read it. It's about 500 pages, so two books is 1,000 pages. <laughs> and uh, um, what do you want to learn from it? I call it Toynbee. Uh, uh, we know the Toynbee, right? Yes. Uh, he's a famous, famous for uh, challenge and response, right? Okay. Um, I, I like to talk to about him. Uh, 1967, he came to America, uh, University of uh, Pittsburgh, and uh, uh, University of Pittsburgh uh, asked him to write only uh, lecture give only only one time and write about uh, history uh, based on. Uh, American history. So he uh, stayed there, gave one time lecture. He uh, wrote the book, uh, um, uh, Poor in uh, Abundance. Uh, and the, that book was really amazing to me uh, because he said that um, he sees the history uh, is. Uh, um, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, think that the human history started where there is a war and uh, uh, places, right? So uh, India, Indus, or Mesopotamia, that area. But he sees in America, uh, northern, northern America is uh, richer than southern America. So he sees that that's not true. Uh, challenges, northern uh, uh, America more challenges than uh, southern uh, America because the weather constantly challenges. So he said that northern uh, America is more developed than southern America. And uh, uh, also he said that when we are poor, um, we, all, we share everything. Uh, and uh, we know each other so well. But when I'm rich, we become rich. You know, uh, each one uses their own room, and each one has their own car, um. and uh, never talk to each other. Oh, wow. So he said, uh, poor in richness. So um, living in uh, a rich, li rich life is not good, he said. <laughs> so that was his book, and I was amazed by his insight. Anyway, uh, Toynbee wrote a um, um, <coughs> book. Uh, History, <laughs> history of the world, and he wrote uh, about twelve volumes. About uh, each uh, volume is about uh, four hundred pages, so that's four thousand eight hundred pages. And uh, he is so genius. I I lost uh, while reading it, uh, but uh, his book, uh, uh, volume ten, I found this one. Okay, it says. Okay. History contributes vision is to give us a vision of God's creative activity on a frame which in our human experience of it. If we have right in seeing history visions of God's creation of move on the move from God's source toward each goal, 
we shall not be surprised to find it. So hard, right? He, that's his style of English. But the point is that um, even though he claimed that he's not Christian, uh, but when he studied history, I mean, his history book is going back to like, uh, uh, you know, only uh, 8,000 BC to, he goes every uh, history, Japan, Korea even, uh, you know, uh, China, it goes around. But the uh, whole point is that uh, Kahasi history is heading to second coming of Jesus. That's the whole of his point. Even though he didn't say it, but we know that uh, we can understand it. So even all the historian can see that the second coming of Jesus is the goal of human history. Uh, I, I hopefully you understand that means. Okay, so our goal is the second coming of Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. Uh, we we finished the uh, first century uh, up to one hundred, and then uh, we little bit talk about up to one hundred thirty-five, and. Uh, uh, <coughs> okay, um, we know that uh, um, when there is no uh, persecution, a uh, lot of uh, heresies coming out. Uh, the culture began to occur. So this is uh, uh, we talk about. Uh, we talk about up to uh, two, right? Uh, so I like to talk about a little bit uh, Gnosticism. Uh, I talked about uh, Nicholas, right? Nicholas, it, uh, he was uh, what? He was what first? Uh, he became a deacon in church, right? Uh, early church. and But uh, he became a little bit strange and uh, formed uh, later, uh, Apostle John said, uh, Nicolaitan, uh, in Revelation he said Nicolaitan, uh, he formed Nicolaitan, and is very uh, similar to uh, Zezebel in the Old Testament. So hopefully you can, I like to talk about the Platon's uh, philosophy, I'm not a philosophy major, but um, um, because Christian faith and uh, plus, uh, plat Platonism, if you hybrid it, it become actually uh, Narcissism. Uh, the main Narcissism is, uh, everybody know that, right? Uh, what is the main uh, Narcissism uh, in early church? Is anyone can, uh, I don't know, am I going too fast? I mean, it is too, too difficult to talk about. What is the last? That's the decision. Um, okay. All right. So after you say it, you can do anything. Yes, this is part of it, right? Okay. All right. Main idea is actually um, human body is evil and the human spirit is uh, uh, clean, right? So uh, no matter how, what kind of sin we commit in the human body, uh, since our soul is clean, uh, we can go kingdom of God. That's the basic idea of Gnosticism, right? Okay. Um, uh, so, Plato, I like to go to Plato. I, I'm so sorry, uh, this is too much. <laughs> can I talk about a little bit of Plato's uh, philosophy? Yes. I mean, yes. uh, I don't know, young people, is it okay? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Plato was born uh, 427 BC. Uh, his name is not Plato. Uh, his name is not Aristot Aristotle, but his name is Aristocles. Okay, uh, he was a, a wrestler, uh, wrestler, and took his name Plato because he had a broad shoulder. His shoulder was so big, so he took his name Plato. 
And then uh, he became a disciple of Socrates. And uh, uh, when Socrates was drinking poison, uh, he died, right? Okay. I don't want to talk about the why he died, but anyway, uh, when uh, Socrates, uh, Socrates died, uh, he traveled 12 years and returned to Athens and found the academy uh, in 387 BC. And he came up and synthesized the Ionian and Italian philosophies. Okay? So, all right. This Ionia is uh, presently Turkey. Does not mean Ionia philosophers is uh, Ionian philosophers, but they are Greek philosophers. But Greeks lived in Ionia, uh, so they called the Ionian uh, philosophers. And Italia, Italian philosophers, we call Italian philosophers, but they are Greeks. Okay. All right. Ionian uh, philosopher we call uh, corporeal monists. What the heck is that? <laughs> but uh, meaning that uh, everything comes from one element. In other words, you know, uh, everything comes from water or fire. That's the meaning of a corporeal monists. Okay. And then uh, Italian. Uh, um, uh, philosophers, they instituted incorporeal monist, meaning mm. spiritual. Everything comes from spiritual. Okay, that's the differences. And he he synthesized and uh, uh, he made these uh, seven ideas. Okay, okay. He he opposed. This is he opposed atheism. Okay, no God. He opposed. Some philosophers said that there is no God, but he opposed the atheism. He opposed uh, uh, empiricism, uh, meaning that you know some philosopher teaches us that we are only learning uh, through experience, through uh, five senses. Okay, so he opposes. He opposes relativism, uh, meaning that there is no absolute truth. He opposes it. He opposes hedonism to seek pleasures. Um, I realized that uh, college freshmen, um, they are very typically hedonistic <laughs> because in college uh, freshmen, they study little and drink a lot. <laughs> but we know that domoa, uh, we seek pleasure. Uh, domoa, we feel pains, right? Mm. Okay, so. He opposes hedonism. He opposes uh, materialism. Uh, he, he, whatever it is, is matter. Meaning, materialism exists. Not speech, nothing spiritual exists. He uh, opposed naturalism. Uh, you know, he said that there is only uh, you know, cause to human beings and natural causes. But uh, uh, I know that. Uh, Dr. Petras will talk about um, uh, tomorrow healing, uh, internal and uh, what is the <laughs> in Sunday? I think it's more of the one writing, but uh, uh, more fancy. <laughs> okay, uh, all right. Uh, we hurt. We have pain. The feeling, not only f uh, physical body, but. Uh, Spiritual body or souls, right? Okay, and mechanism, mechanism. He, he opposed mechanism because uh, everything operates universe by mechanically. Uh, that's not true, right? It's not only uh, moving things by mechanically. When we looking at this, uh, his his uh, philosophy is very close to Christianity. So if we, there is a great danger that if we take his philosophy into Christianity, there is a danger that we forming uh, heresies. So that's the very dangerous. Okay. Uh, so that's why I'm bringing out, and I'm going to tell you that only Christians took um, Platon's uh, philosophy into Christianity. And that's the region there was uh, forming a lot of cults. Okay. 
anyway. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so uh, that's what uh, I think. Uh, uh, Platon philosoph uh, philosophy can be uh, Gnosticism too. Okay, all right. We talk about uh, uh, Montanism, right? Uh, yesterday we talked about. Okay, I like to talk about uh, Marcionite. Marcion uh, lived in Sinop. Um, Sinop is if we go to. Uh, sorry. Sinop is uh, here, tip of uh, Pontus. This is Sinop. Okay. Okay. He he is a modern um, Bill Gates, million billionaire, and uh, uh, he came to Rome, eighty forty, and he donated humongous money to uh, uh, the uh, Rome Church. So everybody was so happy because churches suddenly become so uh, rich. But soon realized that uh, he was a uh, um, cult member. He uh, he rejected the Old Testament. He said Old Testament only belong to the Jewish people, not uh, Christians. And Old Testament God is terrible God. He love a war, killing the people. So we don't need that God. So he said, uh, you know, God, we believe is a New Testament God, and uh, we believe it is a New Testament God, right? So he separated two, um, two gods, and then only uh, accept the Paul's writings and Luke's gospel, and he made his own Bible. He made his own Bible. Isn't it funny? But uh, in history, there is uh, um, two people whom I know that they made their own Bible. Did anyone know that who made their own Bible? Very famous people. Yes? Mormon, yes, Mormon, yeah, of course. How about, um, actually, uh, Benjamin Franklin made their, his own Bible in America. He erased the old God, but he made his own Bible. And uh, uh, Tolstoy made his own Bible, uh, whether believe or not. So, like, he, uh, like them, uh, Marcion made his own Bible, Apostle Paul's, uh, you know, um, writing and uh, Luke's Gospel. And he said, I'm a descendant of, I'm a true disciple of, uh, and because of him, you know, uh, Christian be alerted and uh, made Apostle Creek uh, in 100, uh, uh, 50. I don't know, uh, in, in New Jersey church, we don't uh, reframe the uh, Apostles' Creek, right? Yeah. But uh, uh, Chicago, we beginning of the uh, worship service, we start Apostles' Creek. But Apostles' Creek, uh, Creek is a little, little different than modern, but this is the, uh, the only Apostles' Creek. Uh, during the baptism, the candidates will ask a series of three questions. This is three questions. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Do you believe in Christ Jesus, the Son of God, who was born of the Holy Ghost and of Mary and Virgin, who was crucified on the Pontius Pilate and died, rose again on the third day, living from among the dead, and ascended in heaven, and sitting at the right hand of God, and will come to church, the quick and the dead? Do you believe in the Holy Ghost, Holy Church, and the resurrection of the flesh? If we say yes, you are Catholic, meaning Catholic does not mean Catholic, uh, Roman Catholic church members, but you are universal church member. Okay, so don't confuse by meaning of a Catholic Catholic church. Uh, in the early, they are using the word Catholic means you are, you know, universal church members. Okay, all right. Uh, time's up, right? Okay, so we'll uh, take a break and we'll talk about. Uh, here. Everybody okay? Yeah. Uh, I like to uh, uh, some uh, say some joke and they will start. Okay. Uh, joke? There is a Korean president. His name is uh, Young Sak 
Kim. Uh, uh, he's uh, from the uh, one one area who who speaks a very strong dialogue, and uh, he planned to visit uh, America, uh, Bill Clinton, to meet uh, Bill Clinton. But his uh, staff members was uh, really worried about because his pronunciation is not good. So he, they tried to teach English, but uh, he never changes his pronunciation. So uh, his staff members said to him, okay, I want to teach you two, uh, two sentences. When you meet the Bill Clinton, say, how are you? And then um, in the, when he, he talk, you, but uh, you, you uh, nodded your head and they said, me too. And then, uh, <laughs> that was it. So uh, he really uh, came to America and visited the uh, White House. So as soon as he sees uh, Bill Clinton, instead of saying, how are you? His uh, pronunciation uh, come out, who are you? <laughs> And uh, Bill Clinton was uh, wondered, what? I invite you and I'm uh, the president of the uh, United States. Uh, maybe he's just uh, saying joke. So he said, I'm a husband of uh, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> then uh, he said, me too. <laughs> I don't know if there's a true story or not, anyway, uh, there is a story. Okay, um, everybody okay, welcome? Do you want to hear the on another story? Yes! Uh, yes! Uh, next president, uh, he, he's uh, Mr. John, he's a uh, president, and uh, he... Uh, previous. Previous? Okay, previous, I don't know. Uh, he. Uh, he did a coup, right? And uh, became president. And then uh, he came to America. He was invited by, uh, I don't know who's president in America, but he was invited. So he uh, went to White House. But, uh, you know, when you are invited, you have to prepare so many things, but he is uh, so uh, um, not smart, so he didn't have to do anything. So he wandering wandering around the White House, and then he went to the White House basement, and he saw the uh, uh, IQ uh, machine. So he called the measuring IQ machine. So he called his uh, uh, ministers. He first he called the uh, defense minister, and then. Uh, Ask him to put his head in that machine, and that machine began to moving. Uh, beep, 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 and said, "99." <laughs> his IQ was 99. So he said, "My goodness, I really hired the wrong person. <laughs> Only 99." So he asked a foreign minister to come and uh, check it. So foreign minister put his head, and uh, that machine went in. Big, 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 98. Wow. You know, how come I only, you know, dumb people I hire them? And then, um, then uh, um, his, you know, uh, minister said, why don't you put in your head? <laughs> so said, man, I, I'm really better than yours. And he put it in, and uh, the machine going, beep, 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 don't put the stone. <laughs> anyway, uh, I know this is just joke. So everybody okay? Right. So uh, since uh, there were uh, no persecution, but a lot of heresy come out uh, in uh, second century. A lot of uh, apologists coming out to defend the Christianity. We call the apologists. In other words, they are defender of uh, Christians. Okay, there are many, but I didn't uh, take so many. I uh, want to talk about five people. The first one is Ignatius of Antioch. Uh, 
and whether you know or not, um, the biggest city was uh, in, uh, in during Roman uh, time was uh, Rome, right? Second biggest one was uh, Carthage. Uh, Korean words Carthago, but Carthage. And third one is Alexandria in Egypt. The fourth one is Antioch. Antioch was the uh, half a million people lived in Antioch, and Roman um, soldiers was there. If you read the Bible uh, in uh, Luke chapter 2, there was a uh, uh, <coughs> Roman uh, trip was there, right? The governor was there, so Antioch was a really big city. And uh, uh, who is uh, uh, Ignatius? Uh, when we read uh, uh, gospel, especially uh, Mark's, uh, Mark's gospel, when little children came to Jesus, what the disciples said to little children? Go away. Go away, mm -hmm. right? right. And then what did Jesus say? Mm -hmm. Jesus took, uh, you know, letting children come to me, and one of them pick up uh, sitting on Jesus' lap and then said, uh, Kingdom God belongs to such as this. And said, That one person who said Jesus needs is Ignatius. He became bishop in uh, Antioch. Uh, when um, <clears throat> somehow uh, AD 115, he was accused, accused, and then he went to. Uh, he was arrested and uh, went to Rome. On the way to Rome, uh, he wrote seven letters. He wrote a letter to Onesimus in uh, Ephesus, Polycarp in uh, Sonoma, and the Philadelphia Church and Troy Church, and he wrote a letter to Rome. Um, I think uh, uh, most of them still is there. Uh, one of them I like to introduce is a letter to Roman Church. And Roman Church members, they uh, collected the money to bribe uh, Roman senators so that they can uh, bring out uh, uh, Ignatius. And he said, I don't know, I have it here, but Oh, this is off. Okay, I, 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 I think I did, I deleted it. Uh, the letter content is this. Uh, I know you, you really uh, want to uh, uh, release me from this uh, death. But, you know, why you are taking my glory huh? from Jesus? I'd rather die than uh, released from this, uh, this, uh, this. So, I mean, that's a really tearful uh, letter, you know. Uh, of course, he sat down Jesus' knees. You know, he knows Jesus so well. You know, how much more uh, for him to go to the kingdom of God earlier? So, uh, so anyway, uh, he wrote a letter, warning letter, not to uh, bribe the uh, senators, and he uh, died in uh, arena. And uh, 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 yeah, that's the story. Uh, that's a really uh, beautiful story, and we have to remember Ignatius. Uh, and uh, you know the uh, who is the Polycarp, right? Uh, Polycarp. Polycarp is a disciple of uh, Apostle John. John taught him, raised him as a, a bishop in uh, Samona. Uh, you know, when we read the uh, book of uh, Revelations, uh, there is uh, seven churches, and one of them is Samona, right? And uh, according to our church fathers, Joseph uh, Yus's church history, he's the one who takes care of seven churches. So. Uh, he is a, such a wonderful man. And he was accused uh, 155. And uh, he was a, such a noble man. And he was standing in the governor. And governor 
badly, you know, uh, Mr. Uh, Polikov. You know, just deny it one time. Let it go. Uh, why you won't you die? You know, uh, but he said, uh, my Lord never denied him in my lifetime. How can I deny him? And he died on the stake. So he was a, such a wonderful man. I didn't write so much because uh, there is so many books about the Polycarp, so I didn't write. Okay? Joseph Martyr. He was born Samaria. In John chapter 3, where is the Samaritan woman went? Called Saika, right? So he was born in Saika. And Justin Martin, uh, Martyr. And actually, he's not Christian. He went to Ephesus uh, to study uh, philosophy. And uh, so one time he went to Stoic uh, philo philosophers to learn philosophy. But his teacher never talked about the God. So he said, uh, supposed to be God in philosophy, why you never teach me? So he left the uh, Stoic philosophers. He went to uh, Pythagorean philosophy. Pythagorean philosophy uh, uh, teacher said, in order to learn uh, Pythagorean philosophy, you should study uh, mathematics and uh, art and music. And he said, what? I came here to learn the philosophy. Why are you asking me to learn all those things? So he left and he went to uh, Platon uh, uh, philosophers and his teacher said, in order to find uh, God, you have to meditate. So one day he went to uh, seashore of Ephesus um, meditating. One old man passing by looking for his uh, household. And uh, this old man asked uh, uh, Justin, what are you doing? Oh, I'm meditating to find God. Okay, young man, uh, if you want to find God, read the Bible. <laughs> he was uh, so surprised. What, what is the Bible? Okay, read the Bible. So uh, he went there, uh, find one uh, Bible and began to read. And he became a Christian. So he said, I'm a Christian philosopher and walking around the street of Ephesus. And later, he moved to uh, Rome and opened a Christian school. And uh, um, he wrote uh, two books. I mean, he wrote many books, but two books are very famous. First, the first apology to uh, Antius uh, Pius in uh, 155, and the, that book uh, content is Christianity is not a threat to the state. That's that's a uh, uh, whole uh, uh, whole content. Uh, second, he he wrote the second apology, uh, Marcus Aurelius. He wrote uh, such a way in philosophically because. Justin was also a philosopher. We know that Marcus already was a philosopher. Uh, yesterday I uh, told you that uh, uh, he's a very famous philosopher. Um, um, he's the only uh, emperor that married one woman, have 14 children. So, uh, and his son, uh, uh, what is his son name? Uh, Commodus? Commodus, uh, you know, he, I mean, he was bad, but, uh, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, so he, he used the word uh, uh, logos so much time, so that uh, philosopher, so philosopher in uh, Marcos would understand, but I don't know whether he read or not, but uh, anyway, his book is, uh, you know, please accept Christianity as a legal religion. Uh, that was the whole point. Later, uh, he was accused and uh, died in uh, Rome. Uh, so they uh, put the name uh, Murter. So he became a Justin Murter. Such a wonderful man, wonderful man. I radio so uh, Neon. Neon is friends, presently, right? 
uh, Leon was the, uh, in Roman time, very big city. Uh, they made all uh, Roman coins in Leon. So the, uh, Roman coins are not made in Rome, but Leon. So that big city, actually Irenius is a, a disciple of Polycarp. And uh, in his book he said, when uh, Polycarp talk about John, <laughs> Apostle John, uh, that story is so real that everybody who hear about the Apostle John cried. Uh, he said in Irenaeus said in his book, and uh, he wrote to so many books, uh, especially against the, the first book he wrote is uh, against the heresies, especially uh, Valentinus. He was uh, Gnostic. Uh, man, and he says that uh, um, there are three kind of people. First kind of people is uh, uh, you know uh, Gnostic people. They will go uh, kingdom of God no matter what they did. And Christians, they may go to the kingdom of God, may not. And that is uh, uh, worldly people. No matter what they do, they will go hell. And then uh, funny thing is, is that Gnostic. Uh, Man, Gnostic people can uh, enjoy uh, um, married women, he said. <laughs> That's funny, right? That's, uh, uh, but still go to the kingdom of God. So that, that was... So Irenaeus really fought against the uh, Gnostic, uh, especially Valentinus' uh, idea. Okay? And uh, uh, Tutorian. Tutorian, as I said, uh, he was a uh, son of a centurion in uh, Carthage, and he went to uh, Rome to study law, and he became a lawyer. And while he was in Rome, he saw activity of Marcion and uh, realized it's a time to make a Bible. So he's the first person proceeding canonization for Old and New Testament. He almost made the Bible, except the first, second John, and Revelation. He didn't put the first John, second John, and Revelation because first John and second John is too short. Revelation is uh, so hard to understand, so he didn't put it. Later, uh, later, 367, Athenius made a complete Bible, but he, uh, he is the uh, first beginner and complete the Bible. So I wondered, uh, he should uh, be uh, the uh, level of, uh, of uh, saints. But uh, as I said uh, yesterday, here, uh, if you look at here, there was uh, uh, Montanism, he fell into Montanism. Uh, Montanius uh, uh, claimed that he was he received a special revelation from the Holy Spirit. So modern term, they are like a Pentecostal church. Right. But uh, in that time, Pentecostal church uh, regarded as uh, now we accepted, but that time was not accepted. So uh, uh, we cannot see his name, to turn his name anymore in uh, Christian uh, history because of this. Uh, right, this is a, a cartridge. Uh, they have a, such a wonderful uh, uh, port. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, I will talk to uh, uh, Oregon and then uh, uh, Nakia, uh, Nakia story. Okay, Oregon uh, missionary uh, Mark Young says uh, I have a different opinion about uh, Oregon, Oregon of Alexandria. Uh, we originally is the Ori, 
origin of Alexandria, but uh, instead of uh, remember the name, uh, I intentionally name it uh, Origen. So remember Origen of Alexandria. Origen's father was uh, uh, Origen father was a Christian, and he became Christian. He educated uh, homeschooling and become a Christian. He was uh, such a uh, genius. I mean, knows the Bible so well that many people around the, uh, not only Alexandria, those who travel to Alexandria, visit him, talk to him, uh, Bible, want to learn the Bible. He was uh, such a genius. He really know the Bible inside out in, from the young age. And he said that um, uh, he wrote the book, The First Principle, he says uh, the basic rule for the interpreting uh, scriptures. So he, he's the first person how to interpret the Bible uh, he wrote. And he said that God had intentionally invested the Bible with multiple layers of meaning, urging to move beyond the Bible's body to seek out, discover its souls. In other words, the Bible is like an onion. You peel it that is inside, he peel it inside, inside, right? So he includes uh, all the, you know, uh, Bible teachers, you know, you have to find the soul in the Bible, okay? And he said that everybody can interpret the Bible, but if we couldn't go into the body of a Bible, you are not truly Bible teacher, he said, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, um, he, his allegorical uh, interpreting method is uh, uh, um, it's like, a, uh, you know, allegorical meaning is actually John Bunyan's pilgrim, uh, Pilgrim's Progress. It doesn't say any of the Bible, but you exactly know the what is the Bible, right? And uh, C.S. Lewis, the Chronicle of uh, Naria, what is a uh, lion? Right? We don't say it, lion, but we know that there's a Jesus, right? That's an allegorical. But, I, you know, we cannot say allegory interpretation is all the bad, okay? All right. So, uh, however, he was criticized, uh, especially a uh, fellow, a uh, Jewish uh, philosopher named Philo of Alexandria. <coughs> but anyway, uh, this is my... Uh, when we read the book of Leviticus with its Jewish uh, legal technicalities, how on earth can we make it relevant to us? But he made on uh, Leviticus big room for Jesus Christ at every turn. So because he are using the words allegorically, and uh, um, um, I forgot the. Uh, Look, uh, Colossians chapter 4, verse 4, in another Bible he says, Paul says, we interpret allegorically, or uh, they use the uh, interpretation, the words they're using the allegorically. So we cannot say that allegorical interpretation is bad only. Okay? All right. This is. Uh, uh, Library of Alexandria. We know that Alexandria was built by Alexander the Great. It's a, such a wonderful still. Uh, in uh, in uh, early church time, there was a half a million uh, volumes of book. In, remember, half a million is a lot uh, in there. Uh, okay, this one is uh, a problem occur. Theology challenges. Paul of uh, Samosada in Antioch. Uh, this is a teacher. He rejected the Trinity. He rejected the uh, prologue of John's Gospel. And he said that Jesus was human being but changing, changing to uh, divine uh, later uh, when he received the baptism. And we call the uh, adop adoption. Adop uh, uh, adoptionism and uh, uh, unity of son and father is moral, not uh, substantial. Okay, because of his teaching, 
later problem occurred by Arius. So his theory influenced to Arius in Antioch. That's the really cause of all the problems, right? Okay. So first, um, because of this Paul, this Paul uh, made these problems. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Okay. All right. When uh, Diocletian, um, when he became an emperor, uh, he realized that you know uh, it was hard for one emperor rule the Roman Empire. So he divided the east and west and made four emperors. So there is a junior emperor and senior emperor. Junior emperor is a Caesar. Uh, senior emperor called Augustine. So there was four emperors, okay, and ruled the uh, uh, Roman Empire because at the time barbarians began to come into Roman Empire, and he realized it's impossible to, you know, uh, you know, one emperor going around the fight fight against the uh, barbarians, and uh, uh, because of it, that. Uh, uh, Constantine's uh, father, Constantinus, uh, became a, a junior emperor in uh, Line River. Okay? And then a uh, long period of peace ended, uh, great persecution started in 303. Okay? So we call the great persecution. Rome has uh, uh, respect the law, but uh, uh, because of its degree, you know, whoever find a Christian, they can arrest, they can uh, put the prison. The church was destroyed, and all the material of the Bible was burned out. So occurred from uh, 303. And uh, after two years, he retired, and then a uh, civil war uh, broke up because the four emperors want to be a, you know, single emperors. And then um, uh, uh, Constantine appeared. Okay. He's the first Christian emperor, son of uh, Constantinus, uh, served in uh, Diocletian's military, and uh, uh, okay, I want to finish here, here uh, after this okay, quickly, and and then uh, he his mother name is Helena. Uh, Helena is the uh, woman that built. Uh, Bethlehem Church uh, still exists in um, Bethlehem. In, uh, in if we go to Bethlehem, there is a church. But the Jesus birth the church is uh, Helena. Uh, Constantine's uh, mother, Helena, built it. Okay. Anyway, he he won the battle. He become only one emperor. Okay. In here, right. So this is the Tetra four peoples. Uh, okay, anyway, uh, I like to, uh, okay, can we take a ten, ten minute, five minute break and I want to talk about the ten more minutes and finish, okay? All right, All right. let's take a five minute break. All right. All right. Huh? Okay, uh, I, I like to talk uh, briefly, uh, I don't want to go over because uh, this is a uh, kind of a little difficult. Uh, so I will go to uh, uh, Council of Nic uh, Nikia. Council Nikia is uh, um, here, as you see here. Uh, there was a first uh, uh, ecumenical uh, counseling was occurred. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, because of uh, uh, Arius uh, said that uh, you know uh, he raised the problems. So uh, this is uh, finally uh, Constantine called uh, 318 bishops from all over the Roman Empire, and uh, uh, there was a group of bishops who endured uh, <coughs> Diocletian uh, persecution. So when when the bishops are coming, the bishop means uh, uh, pastors, okay? It's not a, a Catholic bishop, okay? When they came, some people cannot use their arms because 
during the uh, Diocletian uh, persecution, they burned their muscles with uh, irons, and somebody lost the ear, uh, ear, somebody lost eyes. So uh, half of a bishop was uh, handicapped. So we know that how much uh, uh, you know Christians was uh, persecuted during the um, uh, Diocletians, and these people came, and Constantine kissed their wounds one by one, and uh, uh, accepted as a Christian heroes. And uh, uh, when they have dinner. Some people cannot move arms, so he called loyal family members and helped them to feed these uh, bishops. And uh, some people criticized uh, Constantine whether he's Christian or not, but to me, he's truly Christian. He received the baptism before uh, death. Because of that, they criticized, but I believe that he's a Christian, and uh, he really helped build up the Christian Empire uh, because because uh, his uh, faith in Christ Jesus and this is uh, uh, his speech uh, when Bishop came I rejoice to see you here yet I should be more pleased to see unity and live among you a love among you I urge therefore uh, beloved minister of God to remove the cause of disagreement among you to establish a peace. So he called uh, Council of Nicaea because there is two different ideas, especially Arius said that uh, you know, uh, Jesus is create, create being. That was the problem. And he said, he quoted uh, John 3.16, begotten. Begotten means uh, bear. So that words he quoted and said, you know, God created him. Uh, so there was a, uh, so anyway, uh, uh, for a week, there was a really shouting and fighting among the bishop and finally formulated uh, Christ was substance, uh, substance of Father, God of God, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not made, in other words, not created, okay, uh, consubstantial with the Father. Here, consubstantial in Greek was homoousios, uh, of uh, substance, okay. So we are using the word homoousios means uh, God and the Father share the same, uh, um, uh, same con uh, uh, substances, okay. So meaning that father and son share the uh, same kind of substance, okay? And then son uh, could not be a created being. That was the whole uh, uh, the conclusion of uh, uh, counselors, okay? So that is, uh, I, middle part, we have to know it, but I like to brought here because uh, our church fathers, how much they suffer is incredible. And uh, believe that uh, 318 mostly uh, came from the East, but uh, half of them, oh, some people, you know, there is no legs, all burned, their uh, eyes was gone out, and uh, uh, some people, uh, all mostly is uh, burned, and uh, some people cut their, uh, they, they don't have arms, but, what they believe, they are not shaken by any worldly tortures. So uh, we pray for uh, global uh, leadership, leaders. Uh, do you have a, that kind of faith to what you believe you got injured? <laughs> that is very important. Uh, I pray that uh, you may not shaken by things over the world. These days there is no torture, but we have mental torture. So hopefully uh, you may overcome those uh, uh, tortures. Okay.
I want to uh, finish here, and uh, uh, I'd like to have five minute uh, uh, Q and A. Is there anyone? Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of it's great about contacting. Yes. I think he made a, the Christian he bring to the kind of the life. But uh, actually, he uh, actually destroyed many. I mean, as a missionary, Sarah he mentioned about it. He uh, he removed all the Jewish custom, but uh, replaced it to the other things. That if it is Sunday, uh, Sabbath day to the Sunday and something many, many things. So some people say he really because of him we cannot see Jesus in, uh, many things hidden in the Bible uh, uh, because of him. I, I think there's a lot of different opinion about. Him. Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, um, when he brought the Christianity in his uh, empire. Um, Yeah, it has a little problem because suddenly, uh, you know, um, pagan leader become a bishop. Of course, yes, there is a problem. But uh, in that time, um, you know, persecution, theocrats, uh, um, so uh, the, the the next uh, the, the descendants, you know, they persecuted throughout the world in the Norman Empire, but, you know, um, well, um, if uh, Constantine didn't intervene and made the uh, um, issue of Milan, edict of Milan, I think, uh, uh, I believe that all Christians died. So is it better all Christians died than uh, bring? I don't know. That's a good question. But, uh, I believe that uh, because of him, uh, persecution stopped, and uh, he supported the uh, Christians. He built the church, and uh, yes, but there's a lot of problems. Anti-Semitism started a lot at that moment. Uh, Anti-Semitism, you know, uh, you have to see uh, differently. Okay, this uh, the differently because. Uh, Christians uh, really support, um, of course, uh, Roman uh, people's uh, persecution. Uh, but uh, early uh, Christians are uh, supported by um, Jewish persecutions. Mm -hmm. And uh, that Jewish persecution was very severe. If we want to have a building or a house, you know, they can uh, brought it into a court and uh, you know, every case they can win, and they took over the houses. And they, they are uh, Christian families, actually or uh, killed. Okay, so I don't know, uh, how can I say? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to make an advertisement. So uh, a little bit difficult to understand, because it's all like words, right? Yes. But all these places are actually in Turkey. <laughs> so, uh, Constantin I live in Constantinople, you know. So I know the city very well and I can show you all these places that you can for Chamberlain. and nice city and everything. So if you want to see, please come to Turkey. <laughs> His price is very cheap, okay? <laughs> is there any one questions? Yes, sir. His price is priceless. <laughs> Amen. Thank you very much for this very interesting lecture. So can you, um, do you know why um, Helena, the mother of Constantine, is Christian? This is my first question. And the uh, second question is, is uh, the, cons the, the, the radical change of the, of the Roman Empire beginning with Emperor Constantine, is this a natural outcome of the evangelization, or is this an accident, or how can we look at this? Okay, let's talk about the Helena. Helena was a bartender. Bartender, bar, bartender, you know, the... Drinks. 
the bartender. <laughs> I mean, modern term bartender. Uh, so his father, Constantin Luz, married Helena. And uh, because of uh, Diocletian, uh, divorced her. Um, after that, um, uh, she uh, had a faith. Um, uh, what was the question, Helena? <laughs> so uh, after divorced, divorced by uh, her husband uh, Constantin Nus, Constantin's father, I think uh, she was very lonely and uh, become a Christian. Uh, I think uh, she has nothing to depend on, and uh, so she become a and, and uh, uh, actually uh, she built the two uh, church buildings when uh, Constantine become a. a Emperor, the the birthplace of Jesus, and there is uh, uh, in Jerusalem there is uh, apostle churches. I still exist or I don't know that that destroyed and they rebuilt it. There is one church he he uh, built it. Uh, so yes, and uh, um, yeah, a um, lot of scholars uh, talk about a lot of uh, what happened after. Uh, Constantine, is it good or bad? I mean, the missionary uh, Peter Lim also <coughs> says, uh, I have no answer for that, but I believe that uh, God still rules and overrules our lives and our history. I believe that uh, wh when we read uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, God raised the Nebuchadnezzar to train, discipline people of Israel. And uh, after uh, 70 years, God raised the uh, Cyrus of Persia to bring out. When time came, he brought out uh, Cyrus, uh, raised the Cyrus and brought out uh, people of Israel from the Egypt. Whether you believe or not, Cyrus' name is not only in uh, Ezra. If we read uh, Isaiah, there is already yeah. God plan to raise Cyrus yeah. as your uh, leader and God had uh, raised uh, hope for him to bring out of it. So God already, Isaiah is um, 750 BC and the uh, Ezra is 400 BC. So there is a 300 differences. Already God has mind to raise Cyrus. So whether Constantine become a uh, emperor and brought Christianity in his empire. It is good or bad, I don't know. You know, people discuss, there is tons of uh, uh, criticism, but I believe that it is God's plan. Uh, the Christian is advanced because of that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Is there anyone has questions? No questions? Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us time to think about the early uh, church history. We don't know much about it. I don't know much about it. But I believe that God rules and overrules uh, human history. And uh, human history is heading to God's history and the uh, uh, second coming of the Jesus Christ. Help us to give our hearts like uh, early church fathers and uh, uh, live for our gospel and advance the gospel. Thank you for giving us this time. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, yeah. Let's also thank Andres and Fiscal uh, Festas. So then you could see the blessing of a life giving uh, uh, after giving our life to Jesus uh, through the Word of God. Like, uh, Andres, as he testified, he accepted the word. Do you still have no faith? And uh, this changed his life. He gave his life to Jesus. Uh, and he received so much, not just uh, uh, ex uh, entrance for college, but he received uh, spiritual life. So we give our life to Jesus and receive so much.
uh, like when Triska said uh, that a life of faith, she's expecting a daily struggle with Satan. Uh, let's put it this way: you you give a life to Jesus, and that Jesus struggle with Satan, you will experience great blessings, and grow as co-worker for Jesus and for the ministry. Uh, also, uh, uh, let's thank uh, Missioner Dr. Paul Tang for his uh, lecture, World History in a Biblical Context. Let's give him the hand one more time. Thank you. So, uh, this time, um, actually, I, it's connected to Bonn. I would like to make an advertising to <laughs> Come to Bonn. See the martyrdom of Cassius and Florentius, two Roman soldiers who, together with their comrades, uh, rejected worshipping Caesar in the times of the persecution of Diocletian and were martyred, killed. So, uh, Bonn is based on this martyrdom of these uh, brave soldiers and Helena is said to have come there and she buried the bodies of these soldiers uh, among them there and 300 others who were testifying for, to Jesus uh, instead of uh, re uh, renouncing their faith. So we could connect very well and come to Bonn and see these places. It's also very cheap. <laughs> We saw that uh, in times when there are no persecutions, there are many heresies or false teachings uh, rise up within the church. Not outside, within the church, many false teachings. And uh, also Michel Paul said that in all the wealth, in rich times, there's so much spiritual poverty so what shall we do in such a time? So much <laughs> Study the Bible. We should have a global leadership empowerment <laughs> forum. <laughs> That's what we should do. And I have a vision uh, to this glyph is coming to an end. So I have a vision that when we go to I ISBC, that all those leaders that are here and that studied the Bible and spiritual heritage uh, are used as witnesses of the spiritual heritage and witnesses of the risen Christ at, at IESPC. Okay. To have a great influence on young people and uh, co-workers there. To the ends of the earth. Amen. 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 So tomorrow let's meet for Daily Bread and uh, program and also remember the trip to Philadelphia so everything's fine? Okay. Uh, we go to Philadelphia, prepare, we gonna leave at 11 and then uh, prepare a swim clothes then, and the changes and uh, towels. Like, uh, towels. And if you want to play soccer, you can bring shoes or change your clothes. And also the enjoyable heart. <laughs> yeah, we did ready. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Peter Lim, also for organizing this trip. Uh, okay, let's pray and close this meeting. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for your wonderful grace in Jesus Christ. Thank you for reminding us to uh, world history and biblical context uh, how much. Our ancestors suffered for their faith. Uh, how preciously you use one witness of uh, Jesus, uh, who has who, who gives his or uh, gives her life uh, to Jesus, confesses him as the Christ. Uh, Father, thank you also for uh, your gracious work in the life of Prisca Costas and of uh, Andres Quiros in. Uh, and for the ministry in Bolivia. Uh, we remember them in prayer today. Uh, Father, we ask you for, for continuously blessing this Global Leadership Empowerment Forum 
uh, and for empowering us to be your witnesses uh, to the ends of the earth. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.